the real fans of Star Wars is the Caucasian male. Kathleen Kennedy is a glorified secretary. So Star Wars isn't woke. Star Wars is agenda driven. It's not about art. It's not about story. It's about driving forward an agenda. <laughs> so let's start here. Um, I wouldn't watch this for, for free. I wouldn't watch the act life for free. I wouldn't. I have access to Disney Plus. I have access via a friend of a friend of a friend. So I can watch it right there. I would not watch the act life for free. And what is happening to Star Wars? Recently, this is karma. It gives me so much joy what is happening to Star Wars because um, I have a vested interest in the downfall of modern Star Wars. Be very clear here. Not Star Wars of what we know, of what it could be. Because we're going to get there. Because it's going to be a long di discussion. But... Star Wars is down for me. It's personal. I'll explain to you why it's personal for me and why I'm going to do everything in my power that's modern Star Wars. It fails based on where it has been going, based on the crimes that have set in people, Kennedy, have committed. So people have to understand something very clear. This is what people need to understand. Um, the world is not woke. Being woke is good. Being woke is good. Because woke means you are aware. You are awake. You are alert. We've all seen the matrix. I have been freed from the matrix. My eyes have been opened. I have been awoken. So to be woke and awake, that is a good thing. It means that you're aware. It means that you see the truth. You're not living in a lie. So woke is a good thing. Agenda is not. So Star Wars isn't woke. Star Wars is agenda driven. It's not about art. It's not about story. It's about driving forward an agenda. And an agenda led by a company and by an individual. That's what it's about. So when you look at Acolytes, what am I looking at here? What am I looking at here? See guys, I'm going to say some stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to say some stuff and I don't care. Call it controversial. I'm just gonna because I'm gonna speak facts and I'm gonna speak brutal honesty. Why is this the lead of Star Wars? Why? Because do you understand what your demographic is? Because see, this lead, this is not an artistic decision. It's not. It's not a decision of like, okay, based on the story that I'm writing, based on the character. I'm writing about and the story I want to tell, this is the lead. So it's coming from a truly honest artistic place. No, it's not. This is agenda driven. An agenda of females and an agenda of diversity. So we want to show that we are pushing forward females and females care about Star Wars and we're pushing forward black, Asian, whatsoever as well. Because for some strange reason, Star Wars must now appeal to everyone. No. It does not. That's not how art works. Art is subjective. Art is selfish. <laughs> my art is my art. And my art should not be catered to the entire world. My art is subjective. It's personal. And it is something intrinsic to me. I'm going to say some stuff that people don't like, but I'm going to be very key stuff here. So... Before we talk about the downfall of Star Wars and how Star Wars has fallen, we have to go back to the beginning. We have to go back to, to the beginning. And it starts with your boy. You see, Star Trek worked so that Star Wars could run. And Star Trek just gave people the possibility of what Star Wars could do. You see, I'm a Star Trek guy. I've always been a Star Trek guy because, he, see, Star Trek was the first true div diverse franchise and gene roddenberry when he did star trek it wasn't agenda driven he was like i'm going to envision a future where racism is not an issue 
where black, Asian, whatsoever, no one cares. Because in several hundred years of time, race will not be an issue. Sexism will not be an issue. So you can have a black female communications officer. Oh, it's, not, it's not a big deal. No one even mentions it. <laughs> you see, like, unlike now, it's like, oh, but I'm black. Oh, but I'm trans. Oh, but I'm half woman, half man. Oh, I'm they, they, them. It's no. Star Trek is, oh yeah, he's black, he's Asian, but we don't make any mention of it because it's the future. And in the future, we don't need to make any mention of race, sexual orientation, because it is what it is. We've moved past that. So it was a utopian view, a view that will, ne that will never happen because we'll never have that future. But it was a utopian view by Rod Roddenberry. But Star Trek was just hinting at, oh, what you could really do in a space adventure. Then came this dude. Art. My art is my art. And it doesn't need to cater for anybody. George Lucas had an idea to make a piece of fancy art that would appeal to someone like him. That would appeal to a 12-year-old in him. He was not making art for black people or Asian people. Or women. He was not making art for the world. He was making art of like, what would I want to watch? What would appeal to the 12-year-old in me? That's still within me. That was his, that, of course, there were different ideas of dealing with religion, um, dealing with family. But at the heart, at the core of the story he wanted to tell was about something that someone like me and people like me can identify with. Thus answers Star Wars. Lord of the Rings trilogy, Back to the Future trilogy, um, Godfather trilogy. I've held this and I've, I've held this view and I will never change from this view. The Star Wars trilogy is still the best and greatest trilogy of films of all time. In terms of a beginning, middle and an end, this is still the greatest trilogy of all time. We know how great Empire Strikes Back is. Star Wars 1 is still my favorite. That is just... Empire Strikes Back, I realize, is objectively the best film. I've always liked the first Star Wars because I just like the camaraderie of Luke, Leia, and Han. I just like those three. I like Return of the Jedi. And they with Return of the Jedi, yes, there, there are issues with it. Yes, it gets stupid with those little teddy bears. Of course, the, it, it could have been so much better. It could have been so much better. But I still like it. And in terms of a third film and how it ties everything together, I like it. One of my favorite scenes in all three films, in all three films, is the last scene with Yoda in Return of the Jedi between Luke and Yoda. That is one of my favorite scenes in all three films. So I love Return of the Jedi and how it's, ended and tied everything up, was cool. Godfather 3 has issues. Back to the Future 3 has issues. I've always felt Fellowship and Two Towers are better than Return of the King. So when I look at all the trilogies out there, specifically the part threes, Star Wars trilogy is the best trilogy of films. It is. It tells the best beginning, middle, end of a three films ever. So things got tricky. And... And I'm going to come back to, to, to this. I'm going to come back to this image. The real fans of Star Wars is the Caucasian male. Oh, what are you saying? The real fans of Star Wars, what Star Wars was intended for, the true demographic is the Caucasian male, the white male. Of course black people can like it. Of course Asian people can like it. Women will get there. But the real core demographic is the white male. We're gonna, I'm going to expand upon that afterwards. Um, so this was a misstep. <laughs> prequels were not great. Here's the thing about the prequels. Great ideas. The concept of the prequels was amazing. In Salt Judge Lucas only once. The guy has outstanding ideas. Bro, what's everyone doing now? Everyone is now doing pre prequels now. Everyone is doing prequels now. So the idea of doing prequels, 
comes from George Lucas. So the idea of the story, the broad stroke of the story, it was cool. Just that those films were brick films. And thus came this. This is when Star Wars died. This was the moment that Star Wars died and Star Wars was finished. Because the moment George Lucas sold its one and gave it to Disney was the beginning of the end. It was the beginning of the end. So, but of course, there was hope. There was hope of like, okay, well, George Lucas, maybe if you take George Lucas away and you bring in better directors, better writers, and maybe Lucas, he's lost his way. You know how I said like the Star Wars original trilogy is the best trilogy of films? Hands down, no debate. The Star Wars sequel trilogy is the worst trilogy of films ever made. From the point of not only are they bad films, objectively. Force Awakens is a ripoff of A New Hope. The Last Jedi is a garbage film. Rise of Skywalker is an insult to filmmaking. It's an insult to filmmaking. But put that to one side. In terms of telling a beginning, middle, and an end, this is the worst. It's the worst. You have one film in The Force Awakens telling a story that's a ripoff of A New Hope. Then you have a Last Jedi that is pretty much debunking and totally moving in a totally different direction from what happened in Force Awakens. Then you have Rise of Skywalker that is debunking, ignoring Last Jedi and moving away from there. It was a complete and utter mess. It was, it was embarrassing how horrendous, from a structural storytelling point of view, the sequel trilogy was. Again, in terms of story telling a coherent beginning, middle, end story, the Star Wars sequel trilogy is the worst trilogy of films ever, ever made. And we have one person to thank for this. We need to be truthful about Kathleen Kennedy here. We need, we need to be truthful here. <sighs> Kathleen Kennedy is a glorified secretary. I told you I was going to be real. She is a glorified secretary. So when people say, oh my God, but she produced Indiana Jones, she produced... No, no, no. So let's talk about Indiana Jones. Kathleen Kennedy had 0% creative contribution to Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones is about two people, Spielberg and Lucas. Lucas had the brilliant idea of modernizing those 30s, 40s, 50s adventure stories. And then Spielberg was there with the execution. Indian Jones, creatively, is two people, Spielberg and Lucas. Kathleen Kennedy offered a zero creatively to Indian Jones. So all those films that she was a producer of, all those amazing films, she offered nothing creatively. She is a glorified secretary. She's not an artist. She's not a creative. She has zero ideas. She is just there for checks and balances. She's there to do maths. She's a maths merchant. Budgets... Numbers, profits, costs, that's it. In terms of creativity, imagination, ideas, true art, no. She's not involved. <laughs> so once she's now the head of something like Star Wars, the heck is she going to freaking do? Oh, I'll tell you what she's, she's, she's going to do. She's, she's going to allow this to happen. The worst trilogy of films ever made on her watch. And what you need to find about Kevin Kennedy is this. Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy is a woman. And there's a very famous saying, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. You see, women are, have high emotional intelligence. See, as guys, we don't. Guys who are like, we are like, like very basic. Women are far more perceptive than us. They have a higher emotional intelligence than us. They have higher perception than us, and they can see things in the world that we just can't see. It's just how perceptive they are. But women are illogical, and they are highly emotional. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Bish, Kathy Kennedy knows what people have been saying about her, and they know, and there's been this pushback of female, 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 agenda, agenda. So with the abuse that she's been receiving and the abuse that she knows that she's been receiving, 
she's doubling down. She's tripling down. Because she will not accept that I'm going to be ran off by these so-called sexist guys. I'm going to come back to that. So, which is why we have someone like, like Ray. Ray was not cast due to art. She was cast for an agenda. How do you have a character that has no weaknesses, that doesn't struggle, and wins every single battle, that is pretty much a demigod? <laughs> when Luke fought Vader, Vader almost killed him. Vader almost killed him when Luke fought Vader. When Rafe had her big fight at, at Force, in The Force Awakens, she almost killed that bomb, Adam Driver. She almost killed him. <laughs> because you're not here about storytelling or telling good art. It's not about good art. It's about an agenda. That, no, women must be involved. Women must be involved. And I have to remind people again. And this is people who don't like the but I'm going to say this. Star Wars are great films. Without the popularity and so forth, they will always be seen as classic films. Star Wars being the massive franchise, the huge pop culture phenomenon it is today is because of white males. Women didn't make Star Wars. Women are not the reason why Star Wars is as huge as it is today. The reason why Star Wars is as huge as it is today is because of white men. Of course, some Asian men, some black men, primarily it because of white men. And we have to be real now. The main demographic of Star Wars are white men. And those are the guys that will buy the comics, buy the video games, have the forums, set up the comic conventions, and will support it at every conceivable level. These are the guys that will study every nook and cranny of every image released from a trailer. Women do not obsess about or care about Star Wars on a truly deep level in the same way as white men do. They don't. So, Kathleen Kennedy, what makes this odd is you can't go to war against your main demographic. You can't insult or abuse your main demographic. It's insane because, Kathleen Kennedy, you are going to war against white men, the demographic who built Star Wars. These are your main fans. These are the guys that you should be catering to and appealing to because I go back to George Lucas, George Lucas is a white man, and he wanted to create a fantasy story that appealed primarily to white men. Now, all because that's what happens doesn't mean that people can't like Star Wars. See, for me, I like Star Wars just as a backward fan. My older brothers, they are huge Star Wars fans, massive. One of my first images growing up when I was young was just... Star Wars, because Star Wars was just being shown on the VHS again and again and again, because my older brothers are hardcore Star Wars fans. Well, they used to be. Not even anymore now, but they used to be when Star Wars was, was good. So, of course, it appeals to people who are non-white, but George Lucas was making fantasy to appeal to particular people. Case in point, if I was making a fantasy, it would be set in Africa with African characters and a central African character. So it will appeal to an African person because that art is personal to me. That doesn't mean a white person can't like the story, an Asian person can't like the story, or women can't like the story. Of course that they can. But it is mainly appealing to, on a deep level, to Africans. So Star Wars, on a deep, intrinsic level, appeals to the white male. Hence why they are the demographic who have supported it ever since 1977. And they are the reason why it is what it is to today. So to insult them and go to war against them, it's incredibly stupid. It's incredibly stupid. And you have to realize that what Disney has done. So, so, guys, so this is why I have a vested interest in the, in the downfall of Star Wars. So let's think about the original trilogy, the three central characters, Luke, Leia, and Han. Luke has the force, is the hero, hero with the sword. Leia, princess, general. Han, 
experts pilots. Can someone tell me what is Finn's exceptional skill? Does he have the force? No. Is he an expert pilot? No. Is he great with explosives or with machine guns? No. He's a garbage stormtrooper. He doesn't have the force. And he's not a great pilot. So the central black character in your film is literally useless. And John Boyega, being smart enough, knew this. Little story. Before Force Awakens was about to be released, I was hype. I was hype. I even had the Finn toy, which I threw away, by the way. I had the Finn toy that I eventually threw away when I knew how crap this film was. But as I was seeing certain things, I was like, oh, I don't know. I, I see something odd here. And I remember tweeting out to John Boyega that I say, man, Boyega, I hope that you're not some kind of a slave or a sideshow for the white central character in this. And then he proceeded to block me. At the time, maybe I deserved it. Maybe I stepped off the line. In the long run, I was proven to be right. <laughs> so I get it. At the time, he was young. He was hyped. This was before Force Awakens got released. But in the long run, I was proven to be right. Because what I find so odd is, so in 1980, 1980, you have a black character who is the leader of an, an entire city with a cape. He's the leader of an entire city. He has authority. He has agency in 1980. But in 2015, we have a step it and fetch it glorified slave. That's what Finn is. Finn is a glorified slave. Yeah. Um, Disney has destroyed Star Wars systematically because the biggest highlight of the Disney run was Mandalorian. This was the biggest highlight of like, oh, wow, have you guys stumped on something amazing? Whoa, 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 whoa. But then, then Disney had to Disney. <laughs> Disney just had to Disney. Mandalorian started off superb, amazing. But eventually, it's turned into the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda show. Disney wants princesses. Disney wants toys. Disney wants franchising. So they're thinking about the franchise first, of toys first, of their agenda first. So the agenda is we need our princess. We need women and females. We need the cute toy. We need the, the cute character for kids because this is for kids, for kids, for kids. Artistic integrity thrown out the window. You see, Percy for me, I was always a Matrix guy. For me, see, the Matrix, the Matrix is that franchise that's for everybody. You can be black, white, Asian, whatever you are, whatever color you are, whatever orientation you are. All you need is a black leather jacket and sunshades, and you're in the Matrix. So the Matrix was our franchise for, no, it's for everybody. Because Matrix was cool. I told you, shades, leather jackets, leather top, you're in the Matrix. <laughs> now, it was obviously ruined by Guru Lana Wachowski, um, but, and who I would actually punch in the face if I saw her for ruining your own pro production, but it is what it is. Um, but Disney has ruined it. <laughs> Guys, Star Wars, it's, it's finished. What you're seeing are just remnants, and there are guys who are just desperately holding on, desperately holding on. But Star Wars, essentially, it's finished. It's done. So all Disney are doing, they're just holding on to those hardcore fans that's refused to let go. Because what I just find so fascinating is, do you know how, do you know what Star Wars was? Even me, who's not like a hardcore Star Wars fan, I'm a Matrix guy or a Star Trek guy. But even I recognize, do you know what Star Wars, Star Wars changed the industry. It's changed the industry. Ridley Scott said when he saw Star Wars, he got depressed because he was like, I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't know, bro. It changed everything. 
you are sitting on a gold mine, on an absolute gold mine. Because here's the thing. If I was making a Star Wars property, the main character, the main hero, should either be a white male or an Asian male. That's just me. Now, you can tell a particular story that may include a woman or a black guy and everything, but essentially, it's a white male or an Asian male. I am shocked there has not been a Star Wars film main franchise where the lead has been an Asian male. Do you know why? Star Wars is a samurai film. Star Wars is just samurai with lightsabers. A big um, influence on Star Wars for George Lucas was Akira Kurosawa's films and Hidden Fortress. So much so that the original actor that was supposed to play Obi-Wan was Toshiro, Toshiro Mifune, who is this, this guy here. This is a scene from Yojimbo. So Toshiro Mifune was supposed to be Obi-Wan in the first hours film because he was so much in love and he, he was so heavily influential by Kurosawa's samurai films. And so eventually it went to Guinness. But yeah, it makes so much sense that the main character should be Asian based on just how much it borrows off of samurai films. Well, I'm sorry. Like, guys, this was one of the dumbest things. That I came close to leaving the cinema when I saw Daisy Ridley wield that lightsaber. It looked stupid. It looked dumb. It looked completely dumb. Because the thing here is this. I don't know people who don't like to hear this, but these this are just, just facts. You have to appeal to the right demographic. The hero of a Star Wars film or a franchise has to either be a white male or an Asian male. That's how it is. Because you are appealing to a particular demographic. Your main demographic are white men. I'm sorry. Like, whether you like it, so, so please, you can say um, racist, incels, this, that, and so forth. The facts are the facts. White men made Star Wars the popular franchise it was. Those amazing films is down to George Lucas. So the films just being amazingly well made with great superb storytelling, that's Lucas. It's being this famous, huge pop culture phenomenon that changed the film industry. That's white men. They're the guys that watch the films 20, 30 times in the cinema. They're the guys that um, buy the video games, that watch the cartoon series. They're the guys that create the TV shows. They're the guys that make the fan films. The idea of fandom, the very idea of fandom, the idea of Comic-Con and all that stuff, that's why it's men. So you can't sort of ignore that or insult that Kathleen Kennedy. But my hope is... I think it's sad what's happened to Star Wars because I just feel sorry for those for those fans. And I feel sorry for my older brothers. Like my older brothers, they've they've left it. And look, see, we I've all suffered. Matrix has been dis destroyed. That was my thing. <laughs> and with Resurrections, it's been destroyed. But I still feel sorry for my older brothers who this was something that they were obsessed with. And slowly and surely they've seen it being destroyed and now they've completely cut ties with it. So what I want to see, based on just what they did to John Boyega, based on just how they've insulted the fans of it, I think what is should be justice is this gets just destroyed and messed up. And Star Wars just, just dies. And the only hope is Disney totally destroys it. It stops making money. It starts to be really to be a, to be like a loss maker, and fans on mass completely cut ties. That Disney now decides to dispose of it, which I don't think will ever happen. Like the best thing to happen is if someone buys it off of them, and where you can now get much more adult Star Wars stuff and much more edit stuff and greater storytelling. So that's the only hope. But there's such an evil corporation; they are so greedy that they will keep hold of Star Wars forever. And even if it stops making money, they'll still keep keep it because they don't want anyone to make money 
from it. Even if someone else could actually do a better job with it and make better art, they want to keep it due to their greed. It's, it's a sad, safe situation. Oh, and also as well, guys, we have the new Raid trilogy to look forward to <laughs> with a female director starring Ray. Again, guys, the word is not work. The word is agenda-driven. When you put agenda before artistic integrity, you fail and you deserve to fail. <laughs>